Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome and introduce Dr. Robert Murphy, Executive Director of the Habe Institute for Global Health and the John Philip Baird Professor of Infectious Diseases here at Northwestern's Feinberg School of Medicine, who answers your COVID questions every Tuesday and today, Friday, on the Habe Institute for Global Health Facebook page. Today, Dr. Murphy will be answering viewer submitted questions and addressing the latest COVID headlines through today, the 10th of June. We invite you to submit your questions via Facebook at NU Institute for Global Health or by email at globalhealthinstitute at northwestern.edu. Leading the discussion today is myself, Sophie Bukowski, who's a student research assistant with the Institute. So Dr. Murphy, I'm going to start with some updated COVID statistics. In the United States yesterday, we saw 117,000 positive cases with the booster shot rate still at about 31% in the United States, with hospitalizations increasing by 11%, and fortunately deaths decreasing by 4%. The seven-day average in the United States is peaking just at about 110,000 positive cases per day. In Illinois, yesterday we saw roughly 43,323 new cases with cases decreasing by 6%, but hospitalizations have increased by nine, I mean, I'm sorry, the death rate has increased by 95% and hospitalizations have also increased by 7%. Dr. Murphy, what can you tell us about this death rate increasing in Illinois by 95%? <laughs> Well, we keep thinking this is peaking and about ready to go down. Uh, the United States is a big country, so there are areas where it is decreasing. But, you know, obviously the numbers in Illinois <laughs> have uh, popped up um, and the hospitalization has crept up a little bit. But still, considering the number of cases, the number of hospitalizations and the deaths is pretty low. Um, and that is due to uh, a couple of things. One is that the cases are going up because the current variants that are out there, uh, which now include the new South African ones, uh, BA4 and BA5, uh, which now account for 13% of all the, the cases in the United States, uh, it's so highly contagious. It's just, it, you almost just can't avoid it. It's similar to measles, and um, which is, the most contagious thing we know of. And um, uh, so it, it just is super contagious, um, but the uh, severity of the disease has really dropped off significantly because so many people are vaccinated and people are using Paxlovid like crazy. That's the drug uh, that works uh, against uh, COVID, whether you're vaccinated or not. And Paxlovid is uh, flying off the shelf and they've, the, the, the distribution has really started to uh, work. Uh, you know, it's getting to where it needs to be. Uh, it's not perfect at this particular point, but um, it's certainly a lot better than it used to be. And uh, you put all that together. And so the serious disease um, uh, rate is way lower than the infection rate. But the infection rate is just, it's just sky high. Now, if you've had it, you do have uh, some protection uh, from getting it again, or at least with the current variants. So it's just lots of cases, but not too much severe. Wonderful. You know, this goes right into our first COVID headline. Uh, New York City is lifting a mask mandate for toddlers on Monday who are attending daycare and school, et cetera. What can you tell us about the group that is releasing the mask mandate? Well, the, you know, basically the public health approach is giving up on trying to prevent the cases. They're just kind of thrown in the towel and just say, hey, you know, you're going to get it. Uh, the masks uh, are uh, not working as much because without a mandate, it, it's not going to help. And so they're, I think they're just giving up. Uh, also, the toddlers are going to get uh, within the, actually, probably uh, next week, the FDA is likely to approve uh, the vaccine in kids under five. Um, the data look good. It looks safe. And, uh, you know, hopefully um, parents will vaccinate their children. They're not doing so well in the kids over five. Uh, that, that's not the uptake in the vaccine hasn't been as great as uh, hoped for. Uh, and probably under five will, will not be great either. Um, but it's going to be available and people will take advantage of this and uh, hopefully they'll do it. Uh, and that will protect the kids because, you know, even though, you know, there was, oh, kids, you know, they don't get the very severe disease. 
uh, plenty of them uh, end up in the hospital and there have been deaths. So it's, uh, it's a, a more, it's a very, it's a serious disease in, in everybody. And who knows about long COVID in kids and how much that's going to impact. So anyway, that's uh, coming out uh, also with kids. So they, New York is just, they've just given up. Yeah, absolutely. And now going into a second big headline, which is Moderna says new trial results show that a revised vaccine works better against Omicron. What can you tell us about this new fall vaccine that hopefully will be coming out soon? Yeah, this is the version 2.0 vaccine that both Pfizer and Moderna are working on and uh, likely to be available in the fall. And um, the reports show uh, in the Moderna one, um, they had uh, 437 people uh, treated with this new vaccine, which is a mixture of the old vaccine and an Omicron-based vaccine. And they had a 59% increase in the antibody response. Um, 300, this was compared to 377 uh, people who just got the regular vaccine. So um, that looks good on paper. It looks good. Antibodies are good. Uh, it doesn't tell us any clinical data um, because not enough people, both vaccines were good to uh, prevent people from going in the hospital, but you're getting a bigger, um, at least an antibody response in the newer vaccine. So that's, that's an improvement. And the big question is, are we just going to start accepting that kind of data um, to get these new versions out there? And the answer is probably yes, uh, because uh, the, the event rate for hospitalizations and death is so low already that, you know, I don't know if they're going to be able to actually do a clinical trial uh, in a time that's going to make this thing uh, re reasonable. I mean, if it, if it takes two years to figure out the answer and then Omicron is gone and there aren't just something else, that isn't going to do anybody any good. So... Um, you know, I, I think what they will, I think they'll accept that as uh, enough proof and the safety is basically the same. And, uh, you know, uh, th that's how it's likely to get approved. So that's coming in the fall. Now, the thing about coronaviruses in general is they're, they're really not seasonal. I don't know if people remember, uh, you know, I had a summer cold or a spring cold, or you know, I had a cold when school started. That's not the flu. Flu comes every year, like December to May. Uh, it's almost gone right now. There's very few cases. So, so flu is very seasonal. Whereas coronavirus, the ones that uh, cause the, the, one of the causes of the uh, common cold, it kind of happened all the time. And look at, look at all these waves we've had. The Omicron wave, the Delta wave, you know, the, where it, we do seem to get a post-Christmas wave every year. Uh, but we've had other waves in the middle of the summer. So uh, it may not be seasonal at all. But um, the way these vaccines are being developed, it looks like uh, it's going to, the vaccine is going to change probably every year. So you're likely to get your annual COVID vaccine, you know, one time per year. Wow. And, you know, going into another vaccine headline, which is that the FDA decision on Novavax COVID shots could be delayed to review changes in manufacturing. What does this mean after this approval that happened, I think, on Tuesday? Yeah, right. So their advisory committee met and they looked at the data that, um, of the Novavax and it, and it, it, it looks great. 90% uh, efficacy in preventing severe disease. And, you know, it's a completely different mechanism. It's an old fashioned, older technology uh, works fine. Um, and, you know, it gives people another option, you know, people that don't want to take mRNA vaccines for whatever reason, they have another option that's safer than the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. And, um, uh, and now there's some manufacturing problem or issue. Uh, and so, you know, the vaccine is already being distributed in Canada and other countries around the world. And we'll see what the FDA says. You know, they, they, they don't have to, um, there's no 
regulation or rule that says they have to even listen to their advisors. They want to hear what the advisors have to say. But the advisors weren't looking really, I don't think, so much in the manufacturing process as, as they were in the outcomes. So, uh, well, we'll see what happens uh, because uh, people have been waiting for that, that vaccine for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, going into our first and only question, Dr. Murphy, is do you have to wear a mask around people with monkeypox? <laughs> Can you tell us about what is going on with monkeypox maybe being transmitted via air? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and that's, uh, there's been some confusing information coming out about monkeypox. Remember, this has just sprung on everybody in the last few weeks uh, or so. There's now over a thousand cases of monkeypox reported in uh, 31 different countries. Another thousand cases uh, are uh, under investigation that probably are monkeypox or most of them are monkeypox. Um, and uh, there's an issue about can it aerosolize? In other words, can it be? Can you get it just from contact in the air? Uh, and you know, initially everyone was saying, and how everyone knows how it's transmitted is by actual contact with lesions, with contact with the skin. Mm -hmm. That we know. Um, and you know, people that were handling the animals that were infected, um, and uh, so that was the typical way that it was spread. However, if you look back in the history of smallpox, uh, which is transmitted very much the same, um, there are definitely cases of aerosolization. People in rooms down a hall in a hospital that got it from an infected person several rooms away. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of little uh, stories like that. And uh, that suggests that uh, it can aerosolize in cases. In, in, in some uh, cases. And, um, and so the uh, recommendation now is that if you're around somebody with it, um, or you suspect somebody has it, or you're working with it somehow, that you should be wearing a mask. Um, and because uh, it could aerosolize. My suspicion is that, uh, and this is stri strictly suspicion, is that these, as these cases pop up, something's not making sense in the whole transmission thing. People are saying, I didn't have any physical contact with anybody or anybody with a lesion or just any, or with nobody. I, I don't know if that's the story, but all of a sudden this aerosolization thing comes up. And that means some of the investigation is not pointing to uh, some actual direct physical contact with, with the person. So um, that's just a guess, but all of a sudden masks are back and masks work. So um, masking around uh, uh, a high-risk person um, is uh, probably a safe thing uh, to do, or it will be a very helpful thing to do to prevent getting monkeypox. But, you know, the cases are popping up. It's still limited uh, in, um, to, uh, certain groups, particularly men who have sex with other men in, uh, in crowded places, like in gay pride events and, and the like. Um, but it's not exclusively there and it's not a classic sexually transmitted disease. Um, it never has been. And, uh, it's just, you know, congregating with people and somebody has it, they don't know they have it maybe asymptomatic people can spread it. That's another thing uh, that's out there. Uh, we've always thought before that that was not the case. Uh, it depends. But anyway, we'll find more about that as more cases pop up. And uh, there is a vaccine. Of course, the United States, as we mentioned, I think already uh, earlier this week, uh, just purchased uh, some 36,000 more doses of the Genios uh, Bavaria Nord Nordique um, vaccine, which is very safe. It's an inactivated vaccine. Um, and uh, there's like another million in a stockpile someplace and, and uh, more of it is being manufactured uh, just in case this thing does get out of control. Um, but uh, right now it's still at the outbreak level. Wow, well, thank you, Dr. Murphy. Those were all of our COVID questions for today. All right, and so um, we'll be meeting again uh, next Tuesday.
and uh, I'm back uh, on uh, WGN now on Fridays. So we're going to do uh, this session at Northwestern, kind of a, a longer, more in-depth uh, discussion uh, on Tuesdays, and then uh, the WGN uh, question and answer um, format, news format uh, on Fridays at That's 7 awesome. 5 a.m. Thanks, Dr. Murphy. We really appreciate Great. it.